crocodiles have existed on Earth for so long, they've managed to take the best spots. The Caymans chose the swamps, rivers, and lakes of America. These waters boosted their abilities several times over, provided protection from fires, and gave access to vast food supplies. A crocodile paradise. But sooner or later, there's a price to pay. Let's start with an obvious question. If water can provide so many useful things for crocodiles and other animals, then why do cats hate it? I mean domestic cats, which usually do all it takes not to get wet. Scientists have several theories about that. According to one of them, the ancestors of cats lived in an arid climate and had little contact with rivers or lakes. So they treat water as an alien element. That's wariness at the genetic level. Another theory sounds more logical. Cats do not like to get wet because of what the water does to their fur. They are neat animals that spend most of their day grooming themselves. Now imagine you have made the perfect haircut, put on your best suit, and suddenly you get tossed into the pool. Who would be thrilled to swim in a situation like that? But this only works with pets. Some large cats usually bathe to cool off. And then there are jaguars, and they practically live in the water. Not like hippos, of course, but they still spend much more time in the water than you would expect from a cat. Jaguars feel so comfortable in the water, they not only swim, but also hunt and even eat without swimming to the surface. Even the most experienced swimmer cannot handle this, but for a jaguar, it's as easy as for a human to send a funny picture to someone in a messenger. Apparently, jaguars can hold their breath for a long time and feel quite comfortable. I searched the entire internet to find out if there's any record among the jaguars and found out they can hold their breath for 20 minutes. Wow, this is simply incredible for a cat. But where do such skills come from? And why would jaguars need them? To answer this question, we will have to go several million years back. Back then, there were no jaguars, or any large mammals for that matter. Well, you know, it was the kingdom of the dinosaurs, and at the same time, a paradise for ancient crocodiles. They were so tough they could eat any creature that happened to be in the water, and so they let their guard down. When you stay at the top of the food chain for millions of years, you don't expect this to change. Crocodiles were simply not ready for the appearance of jaguars. Though I don't quite understand, how can anyone ever think of eating crocodiles? I mean, have you seen them? They look like the toughest animals to hunt if you only have claws and fangs. Just think of the tough skin, reinforced with plates from the outside and subcutaneous bone plates, which merge with the bones of the skull. That is, there are additional bones inside, outside, in the back of the head, and along the spine. There are hard plates. It's like putting body armor over another body armor. The lower body lacks additional protection, but the skin still remains tough. Together, this makes the crocodile's body almost impervious to attacks, and if you add powerful jaws, the ability to stay submerged for a long time, plus other skills, you get Chuck Norris from the animal world. Hit me, tough guy. <laughs> you call out a hit. When you have such strong protection, you do not expect anyone will try to break through it. Neither did the crocodiles. And jaguars had enough time to evolve. Probably one day they looked into the pond and thought that this log with teeth could be a great lunch, which means they will have to learn to swim and pick a crocodile out of its skin. They know for sure crocodiles are no easy prey, so they figured out exactly where to bite. The short and wide fangs of the jaguar can break the skull of any victim and pierce the brain. All of the crocodile's armor becomes useless if the jaguar deals its deadly bite. He often aims at the ears, which are behind the eyes and are covered with something like a membrane. If ancient cats saw the powerful jaws their descendants had, they would probably be surprised. But I was amazed by something else. Some saber-toothed cats could not boast of a strong bite. Yes, these huge beasts with giant fangs did not have strong enough muscles to crush the victim with the power of their jaws. Even the Smilodons, mistakenly called saber-toothed tigers, were weak compared to today's lions. Sorry, Diego, you're out of the competition. <gasps> but if the Smilodons had a weak bite, how did they sink their fangs into the victim? Or what, those were fake fangs that just looked pretty? Scientists have concluded that instead of the strong jaw muscles, the ancient predators had a strong neck. Quite a strange choice. But that's how they took down their victim. They raised and lowered their heads, poking their fangs like the jackhammer of death. 
While the ancestors of modern wildcats were shaking their heads, the ancestors of crocodiles instilled fear in all living things. And the most striking example is Dinosuchus. It lived from 82 to 73 million years ago, reached 33 feet in length, and had an incredible bite force of up to 102,803 newtons. For comparison, modern saltwater crocodiles have a bite force of 16,414 newtons and considered the coolest animals on the planet. Some scientists argue that Dinosuchus was so strong it had a bite force greater than that of a Tyrannosaurus rex. What? Some skinny crocodile is stronger than me? In short, it's not surprising that the crocodiles let their guard down and did not expect that evolution would give them an opponent. But now it's too late. Jaguars not only have powerful jaws and can swim, they've also developed a bunch of hunting strategies. They do not chase their prey. They prefer to sneak up on it and ambush it. Better yet, they attack from above. Jaguars often sit in trees waiting for prey because this allows them to make less noise and at the same time hide their smell. Well, who wouldn't want to launch a spectacular Assassin's Creed style attack? But the most important advantage of jaguars is hunting at night. These predators see six times better than humans in the dark because of the layer of tissue in the back of the eye that reflects light. In fact, the darker it is, the better for the jaguar, and too bad for its prey. In addition, the nighttime solves the heat issues that often torment big cats in tropical countries. In short, jaguars were meant for night hunting. All right, all right, so jaguars are powerful hunters with strong jaws and killer skills from a computer game. None of this explains why the hell they can swim. But you know what? All mammals can swim, except the higher apes. If an elephant, a giraffe, or even a bat ends up in the water, they will swim. Well, maybe not like Michael Phelps, but they will swim. If an ape or a human who can't swim get into the water, they will drown. But jaguars don't just know how to swim since birth, they are excellent divers. Apparently, jaguars should thank the area where they live for this. There's too much water around not to learn how to deal with it. Not every human can survive without oxygen for so long, and although each of us has our level of stamina, the results of hypoxia are the same for all. Brain cells are very sensitive to lack of oxygen. Some even begin to die in less than five minutes after being cut off from the oxygen supply. As a result, brain hypoxia can quickly cause severe brain damage or death. The average time is three to six minutes, after which the damage is irreversible. Unless you exercised, of course. And then I thought, what if the jaguars spend so much time in the water, thus they will gradually start living there permanently? It sounds unlikely, but this is how evolution works. Of course, there is no exact data on how the jaguar will change, but we can guess. First, most likely, the paws will change and the membranes will grow. The length of the fur will decrease because it only gets in the way in the water, and only the cubs will remain fluffy, like those of seals. Then the skeleton will begin to change. The pelvis will shrink, gradually the hind legs will press against it and become either a tail or atrophy altogether. In the end, the respiratory system will be transformed, but not completely. No one's going to grow gills. Yes, this is too serious step. Even the whales did not come up to this. To evolve into some kind of sea or at least river animals, jaguars will have to go a very long way. Evolution has never been a fast process, but it is impossible to predict how long it will take. Sometimes changes take millions of years, and sometimes even a couple of decades is enough. No one will turn into a fish over several generations, but the red-throated anole has learned to climb trees in just 15 years when the lizards were driven off from their usual habitats. Who knows how jaguars will behave if the planet changes? See you later!